Okay, I'm just going to quickly talk about planting plum trees for self-sufficiency. Okay, so the idea of growing food for self-sufficiency, I've, I've learned over a long period of time that the best method is to have lots of varieties of things. Some things will do better than others. You can see what does well then, um, rather than just keep trying with the same thing. So I'm hopeful that um, by planting the varieties I've got behind me, that we should get a decent long harvest. So instead of just having a few glorious weeks of plums in kind of kind of mid-August, late August um, of Victoria's, and having a bit of a glut then that we can do stuff with, I'd rather have spread it out across the whole time and then hopefully plan for a few gluts with a few extra trees um, so we can dehydrate them, make jams, chutneys, that kind of thing. Um, the idea being that I'm going to have 13 or 14 different varieties of plum tree and the season will stretch right from mid-July right through to the early October. At least that's the plan. But we'll see how it goes. I've picked out some varieties, done a bit of research, and I'm hopeful that it should provide us with lots of fruit. So let's look at what I've got. Right. Okay, so I've got my plum trees all healed in here that I'm going to plant. Already I've got some Victorias that I've planted and I've got some established Victoria trees as well. And they're great for a glut and also great for a couple of weeks in the summer, kind of um, mid to late August and, and a bit beyond. But what I wanted to do was really extend the season with the plums and try and make sure we've got plums for as long as we possibly can here. Now the different catalogues say different things about their cropping times and uh, flowering times and I guess it all kind of depends where you are in the country. We're on a bit of a north facing slope here and a bit of a frost pocket so I should imagine we'll get them a little bit later than what they say. But what I've tried to do is kind of group them kind of early, middle and late seasons and I'm going to try and plant a line that has earliest cropping at the top down to latest at the bottom and then have some standards dotted around the place as well. So I've started off here so the two early ones, both of them said they were the earliest ones. So we've got Herman and we've got Katinka, or something like that anyway, uh, which are meant to be the earliest I can get here. So I'm looking forward to seeing kind of which one of those will be the earliest. Um, and they should start cropping kind of mid-July, um, end of July. And then we're going to move on then. I've got a, a Cambridge gauge. I've got another gauge down in the orchard. Um, I've got an early transparent gauge, which has been great. Uh, it's not that early, but it is quite shaded where it is. But unfortunately, the colour of it is really hard to tell when they're ripe and when they're not. So I don't know if this will be any different, uh, this Cambridge gauge. But a lot of people recommend it on Twitter, so I thought I'd give it a go. And then we'll move on then. Um, we've got Sanchez Hobotus, which should be kind of late July, um, kind of early August. You have to excuse my pronunciations of these names. Next one I can get, which is Opal. And I've got a couple of these because these were cheap ones from Pound Stretchers. Um, or the range or somewhere. I think they're about five or six quid each. So I've got one I'm going to plant up by my workshop and then I'm going to put one in the line down there. And they're quite quite an early one, um, quite tasty. I've got black prints. So we're moving on to the kind of middle into August now. Um, then we've got Zar, which is meant to be quite floss tolerant. I did have one of those. I did have to pull it out for something else we were doing. Violetta, which is meant to be two weeks before Victoria, meant to be quite similar. I thought if that extends that season, it'd be really good. And then we're going on to kind of later season ones now. We've got a blue tip plum, um, which also was recommended to me on Twitter. Um, we've got Seneca, which is meant to be a good, a good late season one. We've got um, Marjorie's uh, seedling plum, which everyone raves about. So I thought it'd be daft not to have one of those. And then last, we've got Guinevere, which on the agroforestry research site was meant to be the latest um, ripening one. So we'll see how much of a season this gives us, but it's going to take a few years. Um, I'm going to plant them down in the orchard. Like I said, I'm going to do them as a line. I'm going to do them relatively close together and kind of prune them quite hard in the summer um, once they're established and try and keep them cropping that way. And then I've got some more. The cherry plum's going to go in the hedge between me and the neighbour there and actually provide good pollination even if they don't crop that well. Um, and the same with the Victorias. And I've also got some in the coppice over there as well. So kind of just spreads our chances, see if we get some frost somewhere, frost not somewhere else, might save some blossom, might get some fruit, might not. So, I've, um, yeah, I think that's the, the way to go with fruit for self-sufficiency. If I was trying to do this commercially or trying to make profit off it, I'd probably have all of one type so I knew they'd crop at once and we could sell them or, you know, have a few more of each one. But this way, at least we'll get something from each. I'm hopeful anyway, but we will. And uh, it just means it spreads the harvest a little bit. If you like this video please click the thumbs up subscribe and tell me what your favorite variety of plum is and i'll add it to my wanted list and next year i might get it and put it in the plot uh, if i can find some more room for them that is